Hi, I'm going to talk about what is accidental sampling. It's also known as uh, convenient sampling. You've heard about uh, what is uh, sampling and what is random sampling, what is simple random sampling, what is stratified random sampling. Now, this is this may be very new to you. What is accidental sampling, right? But this is also used in many areas in social science, in in product management, in scientific research as well. So before that, we will talk about what is sampling, right? Sampling is about selecting a set of observation from uh, the population to do research, right? You want to do research on the sample, not on the full population. And but you want to draw conclusion about your research uh, on the entire population, right? So you want to extrapolate the conclusion from the sample to the population, right? That's why we do sampling. Uh, often there is a requirement of unbiasedness. That means when you create your sample from the population, you need to be unbiased and hence random sampling is used. That means you randomly pick observations from the population to be in the sample right, for research. So that uh, requirement is strictly adhered to in many areas of research. But random sampling uh, cannot be done in all kinds of problems and we will talk about that and that's when you you use the accidental sampling and we'll talk about what it is all about right so random sampling is also known as probability sampling so what is accidental sampling we discussed about random sampling right randomly picking observation but it is not always possible to randomly pick observation in some situation Picking a sample randomly uh, or doing a probability sampling is not possible and that's when you use accidental sampling. It's also known as non-probabilitic sampling because it's not fully random sampling. Now this is commonly used in situations where it's difficult to obtain uh, a representative sample for the population. Um, and that is uh, not often the case because in most situations you will be able to have a representative sample for the population but in some scenarios you may have tough time to get a representative sample then you compromise on the representativeness for the sake of uh, you know less cost less time you know quick research uh, right but often people misuse that, by the way, and I'll, I'll talk about that. So in study uh, research, which are time sensitive or cost sensitive, right, where people do not have money or time to, you know, invest uh, to get a very good representative sample, they uh, tend to prefer accidental sampling. Um, and uh, accidental sampling is also used when the research is not um, super scientific that means it's not going to be causing a lot of uh, you know sort of a political um, or academic uh, you know disagreement from a lot of people right and I, I will talk about about that also um, it's also known as convenient sampling or opportunity sampling opportunity sampling because you know you are being a bit opportunity uh, in a way right you are not trying to spend money and, 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 and time to get a representative data. Also known as convenient sampling because it's more convenient, you can quickly get things done, right? Uh, so you are basically creating a sample based on easy availability. But this could be a problem because it could induce sample error. So the results coming out of the accidental, you know, research and accidental samples may not be uh, unbiased, may not be quite good, so it would it should therefore be interpreted very carefully and there must be a disclaimer in place for people to you know understand otherwise uh, it could be taken out of context so it is therefore less useful in scientific research, uh, research but many social scientists they do use this also in uh, engineering um, problems like in machine learning in 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 many areas of engineering for example in uh, if you're building an e-commerce site, uh, you could also use accident sampling because you know you really need to build something very fast. You know the tech industry is uh, very fast; uh, it's changing very very rapidly. So you do not have time uh, to you know uh, wait for a representative sample. Also for startups, for example, right? You do not have 
money to collect data so there you could also uh, use accidental sampling especially on consumer research right on product research, uh, if you are developing products for consumers uh, you you could do that right for ux research or for product research um, now this is used primarily in exploratory research or in pilot studies to get an initial understanding of the research problems right and research may have various uh, various uh, segments right it's various paths right one way is to first get the initial feeling of the problem right for that you could do uh, uh, an accidental in research on accidental sample accidental uh, random accidental sample right um so that you could do um for example you know you are doing consumer research as a particular uh, a particular shopping mall for example right so there is this uh, consumer company or consumer brand which wants to launch a new product of the country but uh, to do a research by taking data from uh, all over the country right from all the towns and cities of that country it could be very time consuming it could be uh, costing a lot of money but uh, in order to get a get the initial feel you could simply go to a shopping mall and ask people like let's say 50 or 100 people that uh, whether you like the product or not right now that may not be representative of the entire population of that country so there could be a bias there because it's not fully random However, you would still be able to get an initial feel uh, of the outcome of the research, right? And then later on, you could do uh, more or better research later on. All right. Um, <clears throat> you know, uh, also other examples could be, you know, the political party, when they do research uh, about uh, they do surveys and research about uh, a certain policy right uh, they may not have a lot of time to do that and they would then do it in certain uh, towns or certain cities instead of doing it in all cities or all villages all towns within the country right there also it is used quite heavily so what are its advantages well it's easy to use it's very cost effective and uh, it's like less time consuming so especially for startups or small consumer companies it's very useful actually they don't have the capacity to do a proper uh, you know consumer research taking data from all um, towns and cities and villages is very you know very costly that way so you could uh, do then accidental sampling and and that would save a lot of money and time it's also used by the tech company the tech uh, e-commerce company for rapid prototyping uh, right there uh, you get uh, instant feedback from few customers and then you make changes instead of you know spending a lot of time just doing uh, consumer research it's also used in sensitive research where you simply cannot go out and talk to you know millions of people you know because it's it's, it's a secret you uh, you do not want to create a, you know problem for yourself because it's a very sensitive research topic you know it could be a topic on religion topic on on politics i i'm going to talk about what is accidental sampling it's also known as uh, convenient sampling you've heard about uh, what is uh, sampling and what is random sampling what is simple random sampling what is stratified random sampling now this is this may be very new to you what is accidental sampling right but this is also used in many areas in social science in in product management in scientific research as well so before that we will talk about what is sampling right sampling is about selecting a set of observation from uh, the population to do research right you want to do research on the sample not on the full population and but you want to draw conclusion about your research uh, on the entire population right so you want to extrapolate the conclusion from the sample to the population right that's why we do sampling uh, often there is a requirement of unbiasedness that means when you create your sample from the population you need to be unbiased and hence random sampling is used that means you randomly pick observations from the population to be in the sample right for research so that uh, requirement is strictly adhered to in many areas of research 
but random sampling uh, cannot be done in all kinds of problems and we will talk about that and that's when you you use the accidental sampling and we will talk about what it is all about right so random sampling is also known as probability sampling so what is accidental sampling we discussed about random sampling right randomly picking observation but it is not always possible to randomly pick observation in some situation picking a sample randomly uh, or doing a probability sampling is not possible and that's when you use accidental sampling it's also known as non probabilistic sampling because it's not fully random sampling now this is commonly used in situations where it's difficult to obtain uh, a representative sample for the population um and that is uh, not often the case because in most situations you will be able to have a representative sample for the population but in some scenarios you may have tough time to get a representative sample then you compromise on the representativeness for the sake of uh, you know less cost less time you know quick research uh, right but often people misuse that by the way and I'll, i'll talk about that so in study uh, research which are time sensitive or cost sensitive right where people do not have money or time to you know invest uh, to get a very good representative sample they uh, tend to prefer accidental sampling um, and uh, accidental sampling is also used when the research is not um, super scientific that means it's not going to be causing a lot of uh, you know sort of a political um, or academic uh, you know disagreement from lot of people right and i, I will talk about about that also um, it's also known as convenient sampling or opportunity sampling opportunity sampling because you know you are being bit opportunity uh, in a way right you are not trying to spend money and 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 time to get a representative data also known as convenient sampling because it's more convenient you can quickly get things done right uh, so you are basically creating a sample based on easy availability but this could be a problem because it could induce sample error so the results coming out of the accidental you know research and accidental samples may not be uh, unbiased may not be quite good so it should it should therefore be interpreted very carefully and there must be a disclaimer in place for people to you know understand otherwise uh, it could be taken out of context so it is therefore less useful in scientific research uh, research but many social scientists they do use this also in uh, engineering um, problems like in machine learning in 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 many areas of engineering for example in uh, if you're building an e-commerce site uh, you could also use accident sampling because you know you really need to build something very fast you know the tech industry is uh, very fast uh, is changing very very rapidly so you do not have time uh, to you know uh, wait for a representative sample also for startups for example right you do not have money to collect data so there you could also uh, use accidental sampling especially on consumer research right on product research, uh, if you are developing products for consumers uh, you you could do that right for ux research or for product research right. um now this is used primarily in exploratory research or in pilot studies to get an initial understanding of the research problems right and research may have various uh, various uh, segments right It's various paths right so, one way is to first get the initial feeling of the problem right for that you could do a, a an accidental in research on accidental sample accidental uh, random accidental sample right um so that you could do um for example you know you are doing consumer research as a particular uh, a particular shopping mall for example right so there is this uh, consumer company or consumer brand which wants to launch a new product of the country but uh, to do a research by taking data from uh, all over the country right from all the towns and cities of that country it could be very time consuming it could be uh, costing a lot of money but uh, in order to get a get the initial 
feel you could simply go to a shopping mall and ask people like let's say 50 or 100 people that uh, whether you like the product or not right now that may not be representative of the entire population of that country so there could be a bias there because it's not fully random however you would still be able to get an initial feel uh, of the outcome of the research right and then later on you could do uh, more or better research later on all right um you know uh, also other examples could be you know the political party when they do research uh, about uh, they do surveys and research about uh, a certain policy right uh, they may not have a lot of time to do that and they would then do it in certain uh, towns or certain cities instead of doing it in all cities or all villages all towns within the country right there also it is used quite heavily so what are its advantages? Well, it's easy to use, it's very cost effective and uh, it's like less time consuming. So especially for startups or small consumer companies, it's very useful actually. They don't have the capacity to do a proper uh, you know, consumer research, taking data from all um, towns and cities and villages. It's very, you know, very costly that way. So you could uh, do then accidental sampling and and that would save a lot of money and time it's also used by the tech company the tech uh, e-commerce company for rapid prototyping uh, right there uh, you get uh, instant feedback from few customers and then you make changes instead of you know spending a lot of time just doing uh, consumer research it's also used in sensitive research where you simply cannot go out and talk to you know millions of people you know, because it's, it's, it's a secret, you, uh, you do not want to create a, you know, a problem for yourself because it's a very sensitive research topic. You know, it could be a topic on religion, topic on, on politics and, and political parties, uh, topic on, let's say, for example, uh, use of vaccines. Um, yeah, a lot of things, right? which are uh, very sensitive topics there you could limit your uh, research to only a uh, few samples based on your own convenience right where you are 100 percent sure that it's not going to create a problem it could be a small sample it could be non-representative but nevertheless a sample to do your research without uh, bringing more a lot of trouble some examples um right we we have already discussed about the examples i think um so where this is used uh, this is used in social science especially in political science in sociology uh, in economics as well uh, marketing research in marketing research also it's quite heavily used um, consumer research in particular uh, it's also used by political party for election survey and it's quite heavily used also nowadays by e-commerce companies. Well, there are many misuses also. Many political parties misuse it. They only take a uh, you know, very chosen uh, sample based on their own convenience. Uh, and they do a study, they publish a research paper and they announce it on social media that look, this is how it looks like. But it's very unrepresentative misuse of statistics to you know prove their own agenda or their own um, way of thinking their own policies so that's uh, compromising on academic honesty there are many researchers who are quite lazy where it's not a problem about uh, sensitivity of the topic it's not problem about money or time but it's just that some researchers do not want to spend time uh, they're too lazy to you know get uh, good representative data and they are simply used based on their own convenience which could uh, result in a biased conclusion right so that's also a misuse many pharma companies especially the small ones they also do that they because they want to compete with the big ones they uh, also uh, do not have the money and time and they quickly go and, and test something and based on that conclude but that's is not very likely uh, in many countries because the regulators are very strict in many countries but in some countries regulators are not that strict and their pharma companies uh, misuse that 